hey guys thanks so much for watching if you enjoy my videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course give this video a big thumbs up it means so much to me apologies in advance if i sound a little blur i'm filming this voiceover super late at night and i am tired so as you can see we're starting off with clean skin and i'm going in with primer so my primer of choice today is the tatcha the silk canvas primer i absolutely love this primer it took me a little while to get my head around how to use it, but I have found the best way to use it is by picking it up with the spatula, of course, to keep everything sanitary, but applying it to the skin and then leaving it for a few minutes before going in with your foundation. That is how I've been seeing the best results using this product. And as you can see, I have hit pan very well and truly with this product. So yeah, I definitely, definitely love it. And that is the best way I find to use it. Now I'm going in with the eyes today first. So I wanted to get them prepped and ready. So I'm using the Laura Mercier, the Flawless Fusion Concealer to get my lids prepped I like using a concealer because it cancels out all the discoloration and just gets everything nice and even ready for application of your eyeshadow I don't even actually own an eyeshadow primer so if you guys have any suggestions definitely let me know so of course I'm priming both eyes with that concealer and then setting it down this is with a setting powder from Charlotte Tilbury so once we have the lids all set, I'm going in with the Natasha Denona, the gold palette. I received this as a gift for Christmas and I am so in love with this palette. So the very first shade that I'm going in with, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush and build up a transition. So I am using the shade Sandstone. Now, Laura Mercier products are expensive. They're definitely not cheap, but they are some of the best eyeshadow products that I have ever used. I actually have a video up on my channel talking about high-end products that are worth the splurge. So I'll definitely link that one down below if you are somebody who likes to splurge on products, on high-end products, definitely check that video out. It'll be for you. And as you can see with just one application it's full pigmentation the blendability is just unreal these shadows are just truly truly worth the money I absolutely love it so I'm just going back and forth back and forth in windshield wiper motions and I am just blending that product out now further deepening the transition shade I am going in with the color aria now as you can see I'm slightly taking this into the outer corner and a little lower into the crease so just building that over top of the color that we just laid down but then also taking it into the outer corner now I had no idea what I was doing I was just kind of playing around with colors today I just really wanted to kind of play with this palette so yeah I was not really kind of planning on going where I did with this look in the end but it worked out great so once we've laid both of those colors down both eyes packing the outer corner and lower into the crease I'm just taking a larger fluffier brush just to further blend everything out everything is pretty well blended but it's always great to further blend in between each step just to make sure that everything is very very well polished and doesn't require as much blending towards the end Now, next up, I'm switching over to a MAC. This is the oh, 242, I think. Everything will be listed in the bottom bar down below. And I'm going in with the shade Carver. Now, I'm only taking this product into the first portion of the eye, so into the very inner corner, and just like a quarter of the way across over the eyelid. Now, I have found that with some of the Natasha Denona eyeshadows, it is easier to just go in with your finger. You can definitely get um, really, you can definitely get a lot of pigmentation um, with the brush with some of these eyeshadows, but some of them you're better off going in with the finger. So yeah, I'm first going in with this MAC brush, but you'll see later in the video that I do actually switch over and end up going in with my finger. I just got so... I just got a better result by doing that much more bang for your buck and the shadows just looked a lot more pigmented. 
So next up, I'm going in with the shade in the bottom corner here, Brass. I'm using that same brush again, and I'm taking this color all over the lid, mostly in the kind of center to slightly to the outer corner, but taking this all over the lid. This shade here especially, um, you get amazing results by going in with the finger. And the more I've played around with this palette, the more that I've realized which shades are better used with the brush and which shades are better used with a finger application. Now, the, I know this palette too is limited edition, guys. So if you wanna see some more looks from me with this palette, definitely let me know I have been thinking about recreating the Gigi who did her one of her birthday looks with the gold and I think this palette would be great for it now I'm using my finger for the shade lime chrome and I'm taking that one into the outer corner so I'm kind of just layering up and just playing with these golds like I said I had no idea really what I was planning on doing with this eyeshadow look I was just playing around and once I've finished packing all those colors down, I'm going back in with my fluffy brush to blend everything out. And you can see the difference from using your finger. I just got a lot more pigmentation from these colors. Now switching over to this Morphe brush, I really kind of wanted to play with the blues in this palette because they're definitely some of the shades I haven't touched so far. So I picked up the shade Aurora just on this little Morphe brush and I decided to just slightly take this color into just the very outer corner. I'm keeping it low and just focusing this only on the outer corner. At first I kind of regretted doing this, but towards the end, the look comes together nicely and I really like the blue in with the gold. I think that's what makes this palette unique is by having just those two kind of blue shades in there. It just adds a little something more, um, a little bit more variation in with the other colors in this palette. And of course, switching back over to the blending brush again, just to further blend everything out and making sure everything is looking nice and smooth and seamless and no harsh lines. And of course, we're just repeating those steps on the other eye. Next up, it is time for foundation. So I decided to go in with something nice and full coverage because there was so much happening on the eyes. This is the Laura Mercier, the Flawless Fusion Foundation. So I'm just using this buffer brush by Morphe to blend this all over the face. And yeah, I'm just buffing that in. I usually am a sponge girl and I have to admit, I do actually prefer this foundation with a sponge over the brush. You still get a lot of coverage, um, but yeah, I don't know. I just can't seem to really get into applying my foundations with brushes. I'm such a sponge girl through and through. And a little bit of fast forward action for you guys. We don't wanna be here forever with this video. And it took me about three pumps to kind of fully cover my face and they're not quite full pumps either. This is a super full coverage foundation. It's super mattifying, super long wearing. It is an amazing foundation. And I only really wear it whenever I've got like something really dramatic on the eyes. Now going back in with that Laura Mercier concealer once more, I'm just taking that under the eyes to just hide all that, oh my gosh, that god awful discoloration under there. I get quite blue um, in the very inner corner there, so I like to make sure everything's nice and covered and going in with my Beauty Blender to blend everything out. I also use the blender to kind of sharpen up the outer edges of the eyeshadow and just create more of a crisp line. And I always make sure I really bounce right there in the inner corner where a lot of the darkness is. And of course, just repeating the same step on the other eye. Now, with most of my videos lately, guys, I have been taking out the clips of doing my brows just because I don't know if you guys want to see that. So if you do like to see people do their brows, let me know. I don't know. I tend to think it's pretty boring. So generally, I just edit that part out. But if you want to see brows done in videos, let me know. Or if you want to see a dedicated video to how I do my brows, let me know. I'll be happy to film that for you guys. I also take that down the center of my nose because, I don't know, I just didn't get enough uh, coverage on my nose with the foundation but I think that was more the brush than the product. Everything's looking so much more put together now. Now I love this product. I literally have not gone a day without using it since I purchased it. This is the KKW Brightening Powder. This is what I like to use to set my eyes, to brighten underneath my eyes. It is one of the best brightening powders I've ever come across. As you can see, I'm gonna need to pick up another one soon. So I'm just going in with this brush by Morphe and just patting that underneath the eyes to set the area and slightly brighten things up a little underneath there. 
And then to set the face, I'm going back in with the Charlotte Tilbury powder. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade 1. And this large Sigma brush to just pack that all over the face and set down the foundation. Now to put a little bit of color back into the face, we're going in with bronzer. I chose the Kevin and Kwan, the sculpting powder. This is really, really natural kind of powder that's great for chiseling out and contouring. I really like this product for that. So as you can see, I'm taking this right underneath the cheekbone area. It, just, it does what it says in the title. It is a sculpting powder. So it just really helps sculpt the face. So I'm just taking this underneath the cheekbone area to chisel out those cheekbones, put a little bit of color and dimension back into my face so we're not so flat. And of course, taking that over the temple area as well. Some people like to hit their cheeks, their chin their jawline i just tend to do kind of the the temples and the cheekbone areas sometimes i contour my nose it depends how i feel just really making sure everything's well blended and going in with blush this is the chinique uh, the chinique oh my gosh the clinic cheek pop blush pop in zero five blush pop i love these blushes they are some of my most favorite blushes of all time i absolutely love this shade it's got a really nice sheen to it so i'm just going in with my favorite blush brush of all time this one is by sigma i've literally owned it for like i swear five years and i just can't seem to put it down it's my go-to so i'm just using that to apply the blush these cleaning blushes uh, nice and buildable so they're really great for beginners and they make some absolutely stunning shades so I do go in quite a few times and I just build it up to the color that I like now for highlighter I'm I'm dipping in with an old one here. This is the Becca Champagne Pop. This is a collaboration with Jacqueline Hill. I don't think I've used this in like a year or longer. So I wanted to get this bad boy back out again. And I'm just taking that over the cheekbones. How stunning is this highlighter? There was a reason why it was a craze and everybody wanted it and everybody had it back in the day. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still pretty popular. It just doesn't have Jacqueline's name on it anymore. It is an absolutely stunning highlighter. That's actually quite universal. No matter what your skin tone is, it tends to work on everyone. So I'm just highlighting those cheekbones and of course the Cupid's bow as well. Sometimes I hit the chin, sometimes I hit the temples. And then to set the face, I'm just going in with the Hangover setting spray. This is such a great setting spray. It really settles all powders down. Now, of course, we need a little bit of brow gel. I actually i'm not sure what i'm using right now i think it is the givenchy mr Bow mr brow groom i will have all the products listed in down below all the brushes that i use are listed down below so just check the description box now i've just popped on a couple coats of mascara and now we just need to finish the lower lash line so i'm going back in with the blue from the palette so i you're going in with the same blue again, Aurora, and I'm just taking that blue just on the very outer corner, kind of taking it anywhere, about half the way across, and then I'm switching over to this smaller brush to just kind of further blend that out and smoke it out a little further. This look ended up get being a little bit more smoky and a little bit more darker than what I originally intended. Um, this would be a perfect look for a night out, and yeah, I loved the combination of the blue and gold together. And of course, I'm repeating the same steps on the other eye and just staring into the camera. What am I doing? <laughs> going back in with that MAC brush again. I am going in with the gold shade in the palette that I used earlier on, Brass. And I'm just taking this from the inner corner and connecting it with the blue. I really should have used a different brush. I don't think this brush was really the best for kind of packing that color down on the lower lash line like that. And I also took it into the inner corner. Now to finish the look off, I've gone in with this eyeliner by Marc Jacobs. It is a gold, a really light gold. So I'm just aligning my lower waterline with that just to finish off the eye look. And I 
Didn't go in with any mascara on the lower lashes, but feel free. I just left the eyes at that. And then last step is lip. So this is the Whirl Lip Liner by MAC. It is a cult favorite. I have like two backups of this. So I'm just lining my lips. I wanted to go in with a nice neutral lip because there was a lot happening on the eyes. And then my lip choice was a lip gloss by Bare Minerals. I'm not sure of the shade, but it will be listed below. So I'm just taking that all over my lips. And that is the look complete, guys. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye.